Hello friends, my name is Dr. Prapan Shah and today I am going to give you an idea about few of the important flowcharts which should be helpful for you to improve your clinical practice. I strongly believe that we need to remember some of the flowcharts so when we are doing the treatment it will strike us and give an idea about the other options available for doing the treatment. So let's start with this topic. My uh, first flowchart okay, that is for the pressure so which is popularly known as the decubitus ulcer. And any patient who is operated for orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, cardiac surgery, pulmonary surgery or any abdominal surgery, they are prone to have or they can have a pressure sore after the surgery. Okay, So if we are giving the treatment after the surg uh, surgery pressure sore develop and then we give that will become your treatment part. But when we know that these patients are going to have, they may have a pressure sore, so we can start with the preventive treatment. So that can be divided, preventive treatment can be divided into medical and physiotherapy. So in medical what we can do is we can turn the patient every two hourly. It is very important to turn the patient okay, and I will tell you why. Okay, Just suppose a patient is lying down in the supine position. So the entire body weight, okay, the main weight bearing area that will be at the sacral region. So what we need to do is, okay, if we are shifting the patient or turning the patient from supine to sideline, so what will happen now, the weight will not come on the sacrum, it will shift to your other body area and the sacrum will be relatively weight free. So the chances of pressure so can be minimized. So always try to turn the patient every two hours. Second modification, we can go with the special mattress. Mattress, it can be a water bed, okay, where the water will be inserted in the bed and as the patient is moving, the water will dislodge within the bed. It can be net bed and presently we see uh, air fluidized bag, bed that means what the air will be inflating and deflating and in some of the advanced setup we can even see the alpha bed also. So this is from the medical side. Now from physiotherapy side for prevention of pressure so what we can do? We can do the strengthening of the muscles of upper and lower extremity. Now you might be thinking that pressure so is not going to occur in the upper and lower extremity very commonly. So why to strengthen this muscle? Now strengthening of this muscle will allow the patient to shift the weight from one area to another area and it will help food to improve the mobility of the patient. For the same purpose we need to do the strengthening. Active exercise to encourage the mobility. I always say to my students that whenever it is possible from the patient side to do the exercise let the patient do. Okay, When patient can do the things actively don't do it passively. Okay, So this we have to remember. Ice massage, okay. uh, you can do with the base is with the ice lollipop. Take a bowl, uh, add a water, keep a spoon inside it in such a way that the another end of the spoon will come out. Keep it in a fridge. Once the ice is formed, take it out, okay, remove the bowl, okay, and uh, take the uh, one end of the spoon in your hand and Okay, the other with the other hand, uh, with the other hand, you can do the ice cream massage. So you will not feel the cold. Okay, and you can do the ice cream massage. If the patient is not able to do active movement, then only you do the relaxed passive movements. So this is about the prevention part. Now let us see the management part. Management is again divided into medical and surgical management and physiotherapy management. Medical management very important is turning the patient. As I have told you previously, positioning of the patient. So keep a proper pillow in such a way that okay, the weight bearing areas can be uh, ship, uh, you know uh, weight bearing may be shifted to the other area or less weight will come to that particular area in that way. Aseptic cleaning you can do with the iodine poured in solution. Very commonly in hospital you will see uh, the dressing is done with the help of uh, uh, betadine a solution that is iodine covalent solution so uh, aseptic cleaning uh, can be done you can advise the patient to have a high protein and calorie diet okay so that the recovery from this can be enhanced if the pressure sore is very deep a surgical excision to be done when it is too much in depth and it is uh, like a cavity filled up with the pus okay and it's very much deep so in that case you need to go for the surgical excision and many of the cases we have to go even for the skin grafting. So it can be homograft, okay, heterograft or a xenograft. Okay. Now let's see the physiotherapy management. We can go with the massage, 
Okay, we can go with the ultrasound. If you are doing the ultrasound, you have to use the bag method. UVR you can go with. Okay, and uh, ice you can go with the ice cream massage. I have explained you. And laser is very commonly used in management of the uh, pressure sore or the leaky bitus ulcer. It is say that it may have a slight antibacterial or the uh, effect, and uh, it helps in promoting the healing as well. So these are the things which we do from the physiotherapy. Now let's see the second flow chart. Okay, that is about the risk factors for the cardiac disease. Now cardiac diseases are very common, so we must know that what are the risk factors and what we can do for the same. So as you can see on the screen that there are two types of uh, cardiac disease: modifiable and non-modifiable. Sorry, risk factors. Now modifiable is again divided into major and minor. The major is your stress, type A personality, and use of contraceptives. And minor is your hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. So modifiable, we can modify the stress by the stress relieving strategies. Type A personality, we can work in on their habits, and we can try to reduce their stress. And use of contraceptives. There are other methods of contraceptions can be adopted. So these are the major modifiable risk factors. The minor one is hypertension and diabetes. So there, uh, physiotherapy will help a lot along with the medicines. In obesity, the physiotherapy will help a lot. Okay, we can reduce the weight of the patient as well along with the diet and if required, the other interventions. Non-modifiable one is your age, heredity, and gender. Okay, so uh, this we cannot modify. Let us see the third flow chart that is about the congenital heart disease. The disease which presents from the time of the birth is called congenital heart disease. There are two main classifications of the congenital heart disease. The first one is synotic heart disease and asynotic heart disease. The synotic heart disease is your tetralogy of fallot, transposition of great arteries. And asynotic heart disease is your ventricular septal defect atrial septal defect, patent ductus atriosus and left ventricular overflow obstruction. Now the same disease can be classified as a disease outside the heart and disease inside the heart. So outside the heart it includes your patent ductus atriosus and coaptation of aorta. This is inside the heart that includes your basically septal defects ASD and BSD, atrial and ventricular septal defect, pulmonary stenosis, tetralogy of phallic and transposition of great vessels okay uh, that vessels will come outside the heart okay not inside the heart then next flow chart is for the valve repair as we know that in our heart we have a valves okay the valve can go for the incompetency or it can go for the stenosis so uh, in that case okay valve repair or replacement is required so what will happen you can go with the open valvotomy or you can go with the closed mitral valvotomy very important is the valve replacement. There are two types of replacement can be done. Biological prosthesis can and mechanical prosthesis can be used. The biological prosthesis is again of two different types, porcine valve and the bovine valve. The porcine valve, for example, Carpentide Edwards valve. So these are made from the aortic valve tissue taken from a pig. Bovine one that is called as a silic and it is made up from the ox pericardium. And the homograph means what the valve of the another human okay which is uh, taken it out after dissecting uh, the heart from the thorax so that that can be used as a biological process so the biological valve the mechanical one means what artificially made so that is of two type ball and cage type and the heating disc type the ball and cage type is uh, popularly used is your star edwards and the tilting disc type is your shiley square let us see the next one types of humidifier. Humidifier is a device which used to provide the low flow oxygen delivery system to the patient. Okay, and the oxygen which we provide it should be the humidified one. So we need to always see that the humidifier chamber should be filled up with the water. Okay, and let's see the classification of the humidifier types of humidifier. So there are two types suppliers and the conservers. Suppliers is your ambient temperature vapor supplier, heated vapor supplier. Ambient aerosol supplier, heated aerosol supplier, and installation. And the conserver is your heat and moist exchanger. If you have seen any patient who is on the ventilator, you must have come across that okay, in between the patient circuit and the machine circuit, there is one portion which connects a part which connects both the tubings from both the side 
which is uh, inside that there is a sponge. So that particular device is called your HMES, heat moist exchangers. Let's see the another one that is classification of ventilators. Okay, so basically in a broad, very very broad, it is classified at inspiratory phase, pressure and flow generator, cycling to expiratory, expiration, pressure, volume and time cycle ventilator, expiratory phase that is peep, leap and zip, positive and expiratory pressure, negative and expiratory pressure and zero and expiratory pressure. And cycling to inspiration that includes your trigger. In the last one, uh, flow chart that is for your relaxation methods. So, physical methods or physical approaches and the mental approaches. So, very popularly, uh, which we read and practice, that is from the Rosemary Pine book okay, about the relaxation, is your Jacobson's progressive relaxation exercise. Another one is Laura Mitchell's method, Alexander methods, Poppins, Borkovics, and many other methods, and the stretching, which gives physical results. Physical approaches, mental approaches, it includes your self awareness, uh, visual imagery technique, goal directed visualization, autogenic training, and meditation. And there are certain methods in which you have a physical as well as mental uh, effects as well. Okay? So, thank you very much for watching this video. Okay, I have tried to give a few flow charts so if you can remember it and you can uh, implement in your clinical practice. Thank you to stay connected with me. You can subscribe to my channel, you can like this video and you can share with your friends. Okay? Thank you very much.